शबला कोई हमारा तुम हो हमारा उजाला चांद चमके जैसे चमकी शकर का प्यार
What a great pleasure it is for me to welcome you tonight to greet so many friends, old and new, and to acknowledge how much your friendship and that of this country has meant to me. I am deeply grateful for your warm welcome. I am no stranger to London, but this is a very special visit as it is part of a year-long celebration, the golden jubilee anniversary of my Imamat. In Islamic thought and practice, the world of the spirit and the world of daily life are inseparably intertwined. This is why, over a half century, my role as spiritual leader has also required me to act in a host of social, economic, and cultural endeavors in order to secure and enhance the well-being of the Ismailis and the communities amongst which they live. In all these endeavors, we have developed wonderful partnerships with many institutions around the world. And many of our most effective partners have come from this country. These partnerships have involved many collaborators, governmental and private, academic and charitable, non-profit and commercial, religious and secular, national and international, providing not only financial resources, but also human resources and intellectual capital. London has also been an important base for our work with governments around Europe and with the European Union itself. Many of our partners from the UK and other parts of Europe are represented here tonight. We have been fortunate in these relationships and I would like to express my deep gratitude to all those who have made them possible. Our spirit of partnership here has deep roots. Over a century ago, my grandfather, Sir Sultan Mohammed Shah Aga Khan, worked closely with Her Majesty Queen Victoria and her governments in the pursuit of common ideals. These ties were further strengthened by the strong presence of the Ismaili community, initially in places which later became Commonwealth countries and later here in the United Kingdom. It is striking to me that in 1957, there were only about 100 Ismailis residents in this country, and most of them were students. Today, there are 14,000 Ismailis here permanently living and of all ages and walks of life. Our story in this country is a case study in the settlement of an immigrant community, one which originated from East Africa, the Indian subcontinent, and now Central Asia. Upheavals in their native lands, wars of independence, civil wars, collapsed economies, and other dislocations affected the Ismailis and millions of others around them. Today, almost one third of my community in this country have been born in the United Kingdom. They have maintained their religious and cultural identity, and they are well integrated into their local environment. It is a community in which over 90% of the university age population participate in tertiary education. The average household income is a third higher than the national average. <coughs> Britain has been an enabling environment. As a result, the community is now making a meaningful contribution to the economy and civic society whilst also providing a resource to support initiatives in other parts of the world. In 1957, there was only one Ismaili space here for congregational prayer, and that was on leased premises. Creating places of prayer as centers for community life was fundamental to ensuring the cohesion of the community and there are now over 40 such places. Among them, of course, a central focal point is the Ismaili Center 
located in South Kensington. Having Baroness Thatcher with us tonight is particularly significant because the Ismaili Center was opened by her in 1985. Like other Ismaili centers around the world, the London Center serves not only as a gathering place for Ismailis, but as an active participant in local society, sponsoring a variety of cultural initiatives, exhibitions, lectures, and other public events. These efforts reflect our pride in our heritage and our eagerness to share it with others. We have also, in these recent decades, established two new institutions of higher learning here, the Institute of Ismaili Studies and the Institute for the Study of Muslim Civilizations, which is part of the Khan University. They both offer master's level teaching programs, they engage in research and publication, and they also develop curriculum materials for children in primary and secondary schools. In all these efforts, they take a holistic, civilizational approach to Islamic studies, rather than emphasizing the more narrow domain of theological dialectic. What some describe as a clash of civilizations in our modern world is, in my view, a clash of ignorances. This is why education about religion and cultural heritage is so critically important, and why we will continue to invest in these institutions. We deeply believe that scholarship, publication, and instruction of high quality and generous breadth can provide important pathways toward a more pluralistic and peaceful world. All of these comments, then, speak to the context in which we gather tonight, a rich history of partnership, reaching deeply into the past, and extending, we hope and trust, into an even more productive future. Thank you. There is, of course, a very close relationship between the United Kingdom and Your Highness's family, as this Golden Jubilee visit shows. It is a measure of the respect that Your Highness and your family have in the United Kingdom and elsewhere that the guests this evening include a former Prime Minister and the European Union's High Representative for Foreign and Security Policy. As you said, Your Highness, the friendship between the United Kingdom and your family goes back to Queen Victoria and your own grandfather. There have, over that time, been many shared goals. His Highness's family has a tradition of support for higher learning that goes back a thousand years to the time of the Fatimid Empire in Egypt. This country shares his Highness's view of education as the key ingredient for the development of civil society. Education erodes segregation between faiths and cultures. It is the source of the shared values that we need to develop, and is, is, it is a chance to explore personal convictions. The Aga Khan Development Network is a key development partner for the United Kingdom government in Africa, the Indian subcontinent, and Central Asia. And the Aga Khan Foundation, uh, vital with its vital focus on Islam and its place in the pluralist world, is deeply valued. There is excellent collaboration with the United Kingdom government in developing social cohesion in this country and worldwide. And we welcome the forthcoming uh, round table between the government and the foundation on further collaboration. Could I end, Your Highness, just by thanking you for hosting this dinner and for the privilege of hearing from you early this evening about the work that you have undertaken over many years and for which so many people have benefited.
Thank you. Your Highness, the Chairman of the Board of Governors of the IAS, the Chancellor of the University, these are terms of endearment and affection and respect. And on behalf of the governors uh, of the, and the faculty and staff of the IAS and the trustees as well as the faculty and staff of the university and the ISMC particularly, I would like to express our profound gratitude for giving us the opportunity and sharing with us uh, your wisdom and your thoughts on how these institutions that you founded 30 years ago and five years ago respectively have started to make an impact. So this is the result of the vision uh, that you provide us and the encouragement, and on this occasion of the Golden Jubilee visit, uh, and as well as the 25th anniversary of the Aga Khan University and the 30th uh, anniversary of the IIF, we would like to express our very profound gratitude for the vision, the guidance, the support. Thank you very much indeed. Well, 
I would want, first of all, to congratulate you on the magnificent work that I have seen uh, coming from IIS and ISMC. Uh, when these two institutions were founded, there was a vision behind them. And uh, the vision was to reposition the knowledge about the Islamic world, about the Ummah generally in terminology of which, well, first of all, our future generations would be able to relate to, and secondly, that non-Muslim societies would be able to relate to also. I wish you well. I thank you for the Jubilee books that you have produced. I will try and read some of them, <laughs> but five is a lot. <laughs> <laughs>
نظر آئی My great honor today to humbly welcome Hazri Imam for this institutional dinner on behalf of all those present here. We are deeply grateful that Kudavin has agreed to share this evening with us, and we are also delighted to welcome Prince Hussein and Princess Kalia tonight. Hazri Imam, tonight we are gathered together to celebrate the guidance opportunity, vision, and love that Kudavind has shared with the Jamaat over the last 50 years. Each of your murids present here has had the privilege of serving Kudavind and his Jamaat during this time. We would like to convey our deep gratitude to Hazri Imam for this opportunity. We pray to Allah for the strength to follow Imam's guidance, to serve with humility and compassion and to always give of our best. Mulana Hazri Imam, to mark this very special occasion, we seek permission to submit humble gifts to Hazri Imam as a token of our loyalty and our gratitude to Kudavin. A Persian-style cameo of glass vase to Hazri Imam. The vase is finely enameled, gilded, and silvered with formal Arabic panels within bands of scrolls. It was made by one of the greatest gilders and enamblers of glass in the late 19th century called Jules Bab. Although made in England, the design is from the Muslim world and is a reminder of our rich cultural heritage and history. We also seek permission to present a gift to Prince Hussein and Princess Khalia for honoring us with their presence today. A handbook of 10 silk screens with poems by Hafiz on Japanese paper by Iranian-born artist Jilla Peacock. <laughs> Finally, Kudarin. We are happy to present a piece of music entitled Armagan in celebration of Hazri Imam's Golden Jubilee visit to the United Kingdom. This piece was commissioned by us to Ian Wilson, a distinguished Irish composer who has worked with the Ismaili Ensemble in its making. 
Together, they have created a musical tribute that we hope expresses in a modest way our love and devotion for Mulana Azim Nawaz. Zahar and uh, representatives of the institutions in the UK who have been working for the Jamaat for so many years. First, I want to tell you how immensely happy my son and my daughter-in-law and I are to be with you this evening and to celebrate this uh, jubilee visit to the United Kingdom. But it's been an enormously happy visit and I appreciate all the kindness, generosity and particularly the hard work that is gone in transforming the Jamaat of 1957, less than 100 people in the UK, to a successful Jamaat of significant global importance that you are today. Congratulations, and on behalf of the Jamaat around the world, Mubarak and thank you.